there are a lot of people still who believe that everyone who's homeless must have some substance to shoes for them. And it's frustrating. Some people, we just need money to live, not to get drugs. You know, not everyone, not everyone is, you know, is using money for drugs on the street, mostly, or alcohol. After serving 17 years in 29 Commando Regiment within uh, the Royal Artillery, that's a uh, Royal Marine Green Beret Regiment. Um, I'm a Special Forces soldier. Um, I was made homeless after I split up with my wife of um, 22 years. Um, I served in the British Army, as I say, for just over 17 years. Um, homelessness was basically she was having an affair. I walked out of the house, so I went to the ha- local council to be housed. And um, where I walked out, I made myself um, intentionally homeless. They said. Therefore, they will not um, house me. Um, I've been to various um, armed forces organisations um, to help with the matter, um, but I seem to be getting no progress. Basically, I've got a choice. I can go back to my ex-boyfriend and get beat up or stay out here on the streets. So I come up here from Canaveral, North Wales, with a man. He beat me up badly. I left. Because I left, I made myself homeless. So that's the choice I've got. Either go back and get beaten up or stay out here. You know, the thing is, the people who are living on the streets always try to help each other. So if I got, one day I got 10 quid, but I need 12 pounds for the hostel, yeah, and I just came to the giza who's sitting in the Tesco, and I said, oh, can you give me two quid? I got not enough money for sleeping in the, in the hostel, and he just gave me two pounds. And all of us like this, if you need a little bit, a little bit of help, everyone going to help you. I'm an artist, I do a lot of my drawing on the street, and I sell me drawings from the street. Um, I'm Saturday seven days a week and uh, Friday and Saturday night seem to be the most scariest because it's a lot of clubs around here and there's a lot of people with alcohol in them and uh, some people can be really stupid. I was um, just sitting outside KFC and I was just doing what I'm doing here. I don't actually ask for money for it, I'm just saying to people how we doing the thing and two two men walked up to me with iron bars and they hit me over the head twice and everything over the head and they, they, they split all my head open here and it caused like 20 odd stitches in my head and I was just left on the floor but no one really cared about it, no one, there was like loads of people walking past but there was no witnesses, they all turned and said oh no no we, we didn't see nothing, we didn't see nothing and just left me like covered in blood everywhere for no apparent reason. One, one evening I was in my sleeping bag and some lads set my sleeping bag on fire whilst I was in it. Also, another time, a bunch of lads, four lads in fact, started, can I say the exact word? Pissing on me and while I was in a sleeping bag and as I tried to get out, was kicking me in the head, kicking me in my chest. I ended up with three broken ribs, a broken wrist, and I ended up with 14 stitches down the side of my head. Everything in it, it's like being a woman, being out here on your own, you know, it's like no family, no friends, not knowing where you are, because I've never been to London before in my life. It's like everything's scary, you know? weather in it it's got to be the weather in the cold time in the when it's cold you get cold and everything but when it rains and you've got nowhere to dry and you've got just your body just freezes just up by the churchyard there this was about two three months ago we was all sleeping around the back um, woke up went to go and talk to him he was lying there dead and that was because of a hypothermia you know so it's not a joke thing out here. Students that used to throw bricks at us when we were sleeping after they'd been out on the night on a drink. You know, I know people have had, you know, my partner Tessa, she was in a sleeping bag wrapped up with her, you know, underneath the blankets once and um, she woke up to someone urinating on her blanket. You know, it's complete disrespect that people have. I suppose the only thing I can say I was grateful about. I've not 
bring no children into the world so they've not had to go through anything like that you know what I'm saying it's a, it's a very lonely place you know coming from um, the lifestyle that I led within the British Army and stuff um, being someone um, quite respected you know to someone that people just ignore um, but as every homeless person you seem to get this stigma attached to homeless people you know I for one don't drink or take drugs but there's many people out here who do that so everybody's sort of tired of the same brush people who are walking through they not even look at you when you're asking for, for a couple of pences really not even quit a couple of pences they not even look at you they're not answering you like you are no one nothing at all piece of shit in one word you know so that's it's the main, main thing at the end of the day it's down to them right you do get quite a few good people and they walk past you and that and they like they do give you some money and everything they help you out and everything but then you get people that that won't even talk to you and they're the ones that they just look at you and they look down and they just don't want nothing to do with you because you're like you're scum in other words you're sitting on the streets they don't want to know you sometimes i really do give up on the human race but um other times i'm i'm absolutely uh you know i'm, I'm emotional uh, the, the amount of help and generosity that the public do give you some people can be kind some people can be nasty you know everybody's got a dark side but i've been lucky nothing's bad ever happened to me you know it's like i've been lucky in a way but i've never depended on other people i go to the passage day set in the morning i get my clean clothes i have a shower there so i don't really depend on like people in general it's only days like today when they've offered me this hostel and I need the money to get in there that I'm actually out here asking for spare change to try and get the money to get into the hostel. Maybe like put people into like temporary accommodations so then give them like a bit of time to get their life together. You know, maybe give them time to get a job, get some money behind, behind yourself so then you can put a deposit or something down on a flat and then start progressing, getting your life back together, you know. But they're really not... I mean, they're cutting the benefits left, right and centre with everyone. Um, they've told Big Issue not to give out any more badges so that the homeless people can't sell Big Issue magazines to make money, you know? So it's really going bad. The government itself, personally, I don't feel helpful in any way. Um, there was a hostel that we were very close to getting into, not very far from here. And um, basically they took away... The government took away that hostel's funding and close that hostel down and that's made therefore it's caused me and Tessa to end up being homeless for even longer so, um, it frustrates me you know I'm a big issue vendor and um, I'm always very polite and very you know I'm very polite to people and a lot of people do ignore us and um, I've become quite used to it but it does become quite hurtful and quite demoralising in a lot of ways um, Nobody owes us anything, nobody's obliged to us in any way, so it's up to them and it's up to people deal with things different ways. But um, there's no need to be ignorant. You know, we're not bad people. We're just people who need a little help. I used to think all homeless people were, uh, um, how can I put it, criminals or, you know, people that society just do not like as a whole, want to keep away from people and... But it's not. I've met some of the nicest people you could ever imagine to meet. They're on the street. They're addicted to drugs and they're alcoholics. Generally because they have so much feeling and so so intense feelings about things and life and people. And they can't, can't handle it, you know. Can't handle the way they feel about their families or the way their families have treated them, you know. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just tragic, you know how people can end up in this situation in today's... It just... How can people end up like this, you know? I'm not even speaking for myself. You know, there's billions and billions of pounds being wasted in wars, you know, around the world for oil and diamonds and opium and, you know? And yet, there's people living on the streets of our own country. You know, how can this be right? I walk into this cathedral here, you know? And there's boxes, see-through perspex boxes, full of 10s, 20s and 50 pound notes. 
you know, and they empty it every day, and every day it's full up. You know, imagine how much they could change someone's life if they were just to put that into people, you know, invest it into people, rather than putting new lead on the roof of an old broken down cathedral, you know. Imagine if they invest the same sort of money that they they, they spend on an Exocet missile or, you know, a nuclear warhead that gets hidden in a submarine somewhere for a decade. You know, £50,000 for a fuse on an artillery shell. You know, that could seriously change someone's life. That could be a deposit for 50 people living in a new flat somewhere in London. You know, there's so much, so much wrongdoing in this world, so much wrongdoing in this country. And there's so much suffering by the, from the people of this country that, that's hidden away, you know. The homelessness of this country is hidden, you know. People that walk here in the morning don't see the 30, 40 people that sleep here overnight. You don't see that because the police come round at 4 or 5 in the morning and move them on before people on their way to work or tourists get the chance to see the situation how it is. You know, it's bad. It's bad. And uh, none, of the, none of this country's governments want to do anything about it because uh, it's all money and they probably want the money for their own back pockets to wallpaper their new houses or you know put new wheels on their brand new fancy cars you know and pass it off as tax expenses like they normally bloody do you know I for one am fed up with um, being treated like this especially with the time I've served for this country I know a good 20 30 other soldiers like me that are really upset with the situation as well it's been going on for years, you know. The, the soldiers are picked from the poor people. We end up going off sold a lie. And uh, we're the ones that get Ill, ill-treated when we come back. You know, it's been going on since the First World War. There was veterans standing in the streets with, with one leg missing, you know, asking for help. The country never helped them. There's a good few of us soldiers who are thinking of getting our heads together, you know. Not on drugs, not on drink or anything like that, you know. None of us are. And they're really seriously making a statement that um, the government's going to have to listen to, you know, because you're talking about some seriously trained people, you know, some special forces soldiers. They've got something up their sleeves for the future. So they need to start doing something about this before people are asked to start biting back. I suppose that's all I've got to say, mate. My name's Dean and I'm homeless. Hello, I'm John, I used to be homeless. My name's Jason and I'm homeless. I've been homeless about two years now. Dawn Williams and I've been homeless since the 23rd of October last year. Mm-hmm. My name's Wayne and I'm homeless. My name is Roman and I'm homeless. My name's William and I'm homeless.